Aha, yes, this is the M1 MacBook 13 Pro, and yes, I'm gonna be doing some gaming on it. Hey guys, Thunder E here, and if you don't know, I do a lot of gaming on this channel, so definitely hit that subscribe button, notification icon, and you know what? <laughs> Let's start gaming. All right guys, the M1 MacBook Pro 13 is finally here. And we've seen a lot of rave reviews from everyone. Dave2D, Matthew Monens, everyone's talked about how good this device is. Well, I'm here to do some gaming on the device and maybe even pump a few brakes as well. So starting off with what I have here, it's 16 gigabytes of RAM, I've got 512 uh, gigabytes of storage. It's a MacBook 13 Pro, so it's got a fan built into it as well. Loving display, yes, I know you guys want that wallpaper with uh, Darkseid and Superman, so check out the link in the description. And um, it's also running Big Sur. And Big Sur has some nice uh, uh, additives to it. I am not a Mac user. I, uh, I realize now more than ever, I'm still not a Mac user. But I do like some of the additions they had. The notification center is really nice. Uh, the way that you have your current apps and what you're running and a preview at the bottom also works out pretty well for me. They're just some things that I, I just don't like. But that's not why we're here. We're here to check out what it does performance-wise. And we've seen some of the benchmarks that this thing is truly quite interesting and uh, uh, a performance house. So the uh, Cinebench R23 single core test, I did mine as well, 1500. It's pretty solid, really, really solid, quite impressive. Now the multi-core also was really good, not air, doesn't beat out desktop processors, but again, for Apple's first try, this was a really solid game changer. Now you have a system here that is five nanometer chipset in there, and we wanna take a look at some of the games, but before you do that, you need to know the kind of applications you can run. So Apple runs two sets of apps on the new MacBook Pro. There is the universal apps, which are apps built specifically to run on this processor. Again, it's a different type of processor. It's not x86, which you have with Intel or AMD. This is ARM, similar to what you have on your, uh, your iPad or your iPhone. So you have to put it in that perspective. And universal apps on these run like a beast. Universal games run really well. So Asphalt 8 ran smooth, no problem. Now, I will say though, you can play games from uh, the uh, iOS App Store, and I was able to play games from Apple Arcade quite effectively, though some of the games that I downloaded were not part of Arcade, but still uh, part of the iOS ecosystem, just didn't open. So again, some optimization has to happen there. Just keep me putting that out. Now, when it comes to games, or regular PC-style games, if you will, this is where things are a little different. Now, this, these games are run of legacy application through Rosetta 2, allowing you to play original macOS um, games on this device. I was able to play three games so far. Now, just a quick caveat for you guys, if you're running anything on Rosetta 2 emulation, you're going to have some issues, maybe shutdowns. It's to be expected because it's not built natively for this device or this uh, device platform, if you will. So the first game was Dying Light, a much older game available through Steam on the Mac store and Dying Light played well at low settings. Low settings 1400 by 900, which is not the display resolution, but look much lower. It ran at 60 frames per second, 61 sometimes, and it looked pretty good. I had no issues playing the game and it was quite impressive to see Dying Light perform. Now granted, it's a game that uh, is a couple of years old, maybe about seven or so, but it was good to see Dying Light perform quite well. Now moving over to Shadow of the Tomb Raider. This is a game that we've seen uh, that plays on PC and of course on your Mac. And I was able to run my benchmarks here because it has a benchmark tool. And I ran it on its lowest setting and I was able to get 29 frames per second. So make basically something that's playable enough for you to enjoy Shadow of the Tomb Raider. Again, low settings. Now I wanted to crank it up just a little bit more and move it to, to medium. Uh, motion blur is off on both. And I got 24 frames per second, not bad. And I think something quite solid and playable. So you can play Shadow of the Tomb Raider and I think it is it's, it's possible, but just remember it's gonna be lower settings. Now moving over to a game that um, Apple probably wished they could showcase, I think. Um, uh, but of course the uh, legal issue is going around, but I installed the Epic's Game Store because you can do that. And I was able to install Fortnite. 
And Fortnite played really well. Unreal Engine works well on the Mac. Uh, I would say, I think that's something overall and also works well on, you know, ARM chipsets. So it was good to see Unreal Engine work well here. Lowest settings, 1400 by 900. I got 60 frames per second. Uh, ran well, no slowdowns. Able to bump into the highest uh, resolution. Uh, and I was getting about 30 frames per second. So gaming on here, as so you're playing a game like Fortnite, you can play Fortnite well and enjoy it. Not a problem. Now, there are some caveats to gaming on this device. So for instance, um, the Epic Game Store itself ran really slow, and also Steam also ran very slow. It was just choppy going through menus. Uh, certain legacy applications like Chrome even uh, ran slow. Granted, there is gonna be Chrome for universal apps, uh, but Chrome, just, just regular Chrome, if you will, uh, just ran a bit choppy as well. I also had some shutdowns and one of them was Borderlands 3, which I'm not showing you the game because it could not run. For whatever reason, it started up and then it shut down. So again, you're gonna face those kind of issues. But I think what it tells me is that it is possible. Now you're wondering about temperatures. Uh, I was able to play for a while and I got about between in between some of my gaming sessions, I got between 105, uh, which is probably the lowest, to about 100 and, uh, say maybe like 107 or so. And I think uh, that's pretty fine, especially for something this thin. The fan did kick in at that time though, uh, just because it was running a little bit harder, uh, probably than expected. I think overall, when you look at the M1 MacBook uh, 13 Pro is, Apple has come out and said, look, we can do this ourselves. And they've shown they can. And I think uh, this puts everyone on notice. But the big caveat here is that things run well on universal apps. So you've seen videos where video editing is run well because it's a universal app running, you know, Final Cut. And that's the thing that has to make this work and probably will make it work because most developers will switch to universal applications because they are not, this is not an x86 machine. And that's the main thing here. When it comes to the performance of AX86 software, emulation is really good and the processor can handle those things. Now, what I will say for me is the most exciting is that now that Apple has come out and released this bad boy, it means that people like Intel will basically step up their game and give us something much better instead of giving us a 40 nanometer chipset for the last couple of years. We know AMD's been moving up as well, so we're gonna see something better from them in the future. And Qualcomm is now put on notice to service more uh, ARM-based Windows laptops. So I think this is good for competition as a whole. As a PC user, it's not gonna get me to switch uh, because it, it still feels like something that I am just very foreign to. But for Mac users, you have a lot of promise here. And I think you're definitely going to enjoy this as more software becomes available, more apps become you know, usable as universal software. You're gonna see huge improvements here. So I'm impressed. I'm impressed with what Apple has done. Uh, and hopefully that changes gaming on the Mac because it would be nice to see that and maybe we can get more games on here. So if you have any questions or any comments, guys, let me know. Otherwise, don't forget to, sh to like, share, subscribe, and always enjoy entertainment.